What's going on everybody? Welcome, welcome on this beautiful Friday, was it Friday morning, afternoon, one or two. And I want to talk about something very important. Um, I had this conversation yesterday at work. And a co-worker and I were talking and we were just, we were just shooting the breeze about random subjects. And the subject of leadership came up. And what it really means to be a leader. And we were going on talking, conversing. And I made the comment that incompetent leadership is... It's, so, it's more important than people realize, but I don't think it's spoken about as much as I think it should be. Now, leadership is a, is a broad term. Leader is a broad term. Leadership is a broad term. And you can discuss this in any field. It could be school. It could be work. It could be home. Uh, it could be friendship, sports. Whatever feel, whatever, whatever subject you want to speak about, you can fit the idea of leadership in there. And when it comes more specifically to incompetent leadership, people don't realize how damaging incompetent leadership is. And I'll explain my definition of what I think incompetent leadership is. Okay. When I think of someone, when I, when I think of leadership, I always say one of the signs of a great leader is when the people around you have the urge or the want to assist you. Let me say it again. One of the signs of being a great leader, you know, I said people, I said people know people are born leaders, you can't teach leadership. I agree with that to a certain extent, but for the most part, I agree with, you know, leadership is something that you're born with. It's a certain mentality that you have, okay? And I don't believe a leader is someone who just says, you know, I'll do it. Most leaders I've seen have actually been rather reluctant. However, people want to be around them. When, when people come to you, not because you ask them to, but when people seek you, when they seek you, when they want, it's a key word, when people want to assist you, or when people want to follow your instructions, that is one of the one of the one of the facets of leadership. Do people want to? Like, do you motivate people to want to be better, or want to help you, or want to follow your instructions? That's. That's one of the things that I, I think that no good leadership has in common. But when it comes to incompetent leadership, the incompetence for me comes along when you when you are not self-aware. See, when you are self-aware, when you know what you know and you know what you don't know, a good leader will say, you know what, let me, let me put others in a position to do the job that they can do better than me. I know what I know. I know what I don't know. So if I don't know this, but I have an overall idea, let me go get somebody who knows what they're doing. A good leader would do that. An incompetent leader will see the layout of what's going on, 
and think to themselves, despite the fact that I don't know what I'm doing in this particular field, I'm going to do it anyway. And when it, com when it comes to that, it basically boils down to ego. Everyone has an ego, but an incompetent leader has an ego that is just as unjustified. If you are, if you see yourself as something greater, but you haven't really proven such, and you think that you are worthy of praise, but not proven, that's not that's not the type of leader you want you want with you. And I was always told. I remember I was in, I was working at a museum. And one of the managers said, and this, and this actually was very powerful, and I still, I still say this to this day. One of my supervisor managers said, never work for somebody who was not willing to do what they ask of you. That's also a sign of great leadership. I'm going to say it again. Never ask someone to do for you what you are not willing to do for yourself. Meaning, if you're at work, right, and your manager is saying, hey, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, this and, and they're always barking orders, but you never see them, if, if, if something gets too busy, will they jump on with you? Will they jump on next to you and say, look, it's busy, I'm going to jump in here for a few minutes to help, help you with this. If you don't see that, that person ain't a good leader. Because a good leader will get in there with you. Yeah, though they may be a manager, they may be a supervisor, they may be your boss. But a good leader, if they need to, they'll get in there with you. And it's okay, look. Yeah, I'm the boss, you're the employee, all that stuff. But right now, we got we have a goal to meet. We have a job to do. I'm going to jump in here with you. We're going to get busy together. We're going to knock this out together. And when it's done, we can go, go back to our normal thing. That's the sign of a good leader. Never ask, never work for someone who's not willing to do what they ask, what they're not, what they're asking you. You know, if they say clean, will they help you clean too? If they say, hey, you know, I need you to work um, an extra hour, could you do it? Will they be there with you? And this, they say, leadership, incompetent leadership, it can go in, it can be in your family. I also had this conversation with, uh, with my coworker. I said, here's one thing that I've noticed about great leaders. Because it was the whole... I'm not going to get you the whole conversation, but it was a, a man and a woman next to me that had a conversation about the quote-unquote roles of men and women and all that stuff. I was like, okay. I said, I said let me back up because it, it, it was one of him and it was two other women. I think it was just two women. It probably was more than one. They, they, they were getting on him. I said, let me back up because there's certain things that I don't agree with what he said. And I said, here's, here's one of my ways of... For, for men, because I'm a man, so I speak for men. One of the, if you name the people that people admire most, you say Barack Obama, you say Martin Luther King, you say Malcolm X, you say Jay Z, right? You say Bill Gates, uh, Warren Buffett. You know what all those men have in common? You know what all they, all of them have in common? All the men I just named, they all have in common? They all were married. Now, Warren Buffett, you know, being a widower, his wife passed, but he was married. Bill Gates, married. Barack Obama, married. Malcolm X, married. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, married. Jay-Z, married. One of the signs that people don't talk about, but they should, of leadership is... Can the people that live with you follow your instructions and follow your lead? Because if you can't lead and guide your home, 
Man, nobody take, they don't take, take you seriously if you try to run a country or run a country or run a company. Your family is your first business. How you interact with your family shows what kind of a person you are, what kind of leader you are. Because a leader is not only... They, they have to answer to and for someone. A leader has to answer to someone, believe it or not. People think, well, you're the boss, you make, those, make the fine decisions. To an extent. A leader also answers to someone. Make no mistake about it. Barack Obama may be the head of his house, but he still answers to Michelle Obama. And he still answers for his family. So, be aware of incompetent leadership. Incompetent leadership will ruin anything. Incompetent leadership is dangerous. Be careful. All right? Peace.